Hey guys, Marissa at KitchenTableStamper.com. Today I've got this really cute Celebrate Every Moment Beehive Tote. Inside I've got some bit of honey and this little tote is one of the projects we'll be making at Bingo tomorrow in my Chicago area home studio. So Bingo is sold out for tomorrow but there is interest in a second date. So if you're interested in playing bingo in the Chicago area, Stampin' Bingo for the debut of the new mini catalog, reach out, email marissa at kitchentablestamper.com for everything going on at Kitchen Table Stamper locally. Buzz over to kitchentablestamper.com slash calendar. And for everything going on across the country or even around the world, check out kitchentablestamper.com slash online classroom. All right, so for this adorable little treat tote, let me show you the supplies that you need. We've got the um, Ornate Frames dies. I love this one. It's carried over from the holiday catalog. And that's the die set that I use to cut this little Celebrate Every Moment tag. That cutting is already done in my kit. I wanted to show you where the tag came from. I've also got the Thoughtful Blooms stamp set. This is a photopolymer 17 piece stamp set and this is not available for purchase. This is only available as a free gift with your $50 purchase from Stampin' Up! during celebration. It's an awesome um, all occasion stamp set with a coordinating punch. So this new little flower punch is also a celebration item. You can get this punch with your $100 purchase. So if you wanted to make these great little totes, you would get the $150 order together it would be your own party, so you'd get $15 in additional free host rewards. You'd get the Thoughtful Blooms and the Flower Punch as your free celebration items, and what a great way to stretch your Stampin' Dollars. Well, what would you order for $150? Let me give you a couple of suggestions. The Honey Bee Bundle is brand new in the Occasions catalog. It is a 10-piece rubber cling mount stamp set. You can bundle it up with the detail B dies. That's the other stamp set that we use for this project. I've got some ink for you here. Let me show you. Memento Tuxedo Black, Poppy Parade Stampin' Pad, Daffodil Delight Stampin' Pad, and I've got some Stampin' Blends here. This is the Daffodil Delight Combo Pack. Now, embellishments. I've got Scalloped Edge Ribbon. This was a closeout from the holiday catalog. Right now at the filming of this video, it's still available at closeout price. Um, check out the holiday closeouts, but do that quick. And then I've got my metallic brads. We're gonna use two gold ones. You can do two silver. I like this project because it's um, neutral, so you can use up any of those metallic brad colors. All right, so you're gonna need a couple of little hole punches. I got a 1 16th inch and a 1 quarter inch hole punch here. I'm gonna use my little hole punch to attach my handles and my little bit larger hole punch as a flower center. So if you don't have those, there'll be an Amazon link provided in the blog post and in the description of this video. All right, let's look at the kit. I've done a lot of the punching and die cutting ahead of time, so let's see here. I've got my um, scalloped ribbon here. It's about 11 inches. And then, of course, my little bit of honey candies. Two gold metallic brads. This little piece right here is basic black, and I just cut that out with my quarter inch circle punch. It's already done. Got my little tag for the sentiment. This tag I showed you is cut with the ornate frames from Whisper White cardstock. I got a scrap of Poppy Parade for doing our flowers. This is about one by three inches. Just a scrap will do. Got a piece of window sheet here. It's hard to see. Let's reflect some light. This is half inch by eight and a half inches. That's for our little handle. Now the box for this um, base of this is Whisper White cardstock. This is the thick Whisper White I used for the tote. And it is three inches by three and three quarters inches. Then I have Whisper White cardstock. This isn't the thick stuff. This is a scrap that we'll need to stamp our hives and our bees. And it's approximately two and a half by six. Um, any scraps will do for your stamping and die cutting. 
All right, speaking of stamping and die cutting, let's do that first. Let me just slide everything to the side here. Don't lose all the little bits. I'll get the ink pads, the Stampin' Paris mat, and we'll get stamping. All right, let's start with our Poppy Parade. I got Poppy Parade cardstock and Poppy Parade ink. We're going to stamp two flowers. Now you wanna watch the orientation of your punch, see how it has, um, it's like a triangle, one paddle up, two paddles down. That's how we wanna stamp so that we have easy punching. So we'll stamp two of those, tone on tone, and they're all ready to punch. All right, that's all the Poppy Parade we need, and that's the only photopolymer set we have. So let's slide these guys to the side, grab our Whisper White, and we're going to stamp our hive. So I've got my Daffodil Delight and my hive. It's a solid image, so let's really work and get that nice and inky. And we're going to need two hives, one for the front of the box, and we can't leave the back of our box unfinished. So we've got two hives, and now we need two bees. Last up, let's stamp our little greeting on the tag. You want the tag to be facing left. The little hole on the tag should be on your left hand side because it's going to budge up against the flower. Got to celebrate every moment. That's a close fit, but look at how pretty that is. All right, let me clear away the ink pads and grab the big shot. Okay, our hive and bees require two passes. I've already done the first pass, and now we're gonna cut out the second set. And there we go, a hive and a cute little bee. Look great. All right, let's go ahead and grab our Simply Score tool now and take care of our scoring. All right, so we've got our cardstock. We're going to put it in on the three inch side to start with, and we're going to score at three quarters. That gives us a three quarter inch side. Rotate to the right, score at one and a half, rotate to the right score at three quarters. Now we have two three quarter inch sides that are exactly three quarters of an inch, which means our box is going to come together nice and square. Rotate one more time to the right and score at one and a half. Super simple scoring. Got a bone folder and paper snips. Let's go ahead and work those score lines and trim our box. To trim our box, we're going to liberate these small tabs in the center. So we're going to cut out the score line, just a tiny little dart, and do that on both sides. Okay, so I've got four little darts. And this is the inside of our box facing up right now. Get some tear and tape adhesive. And we're going to put tear and tape on these long tabs. And then on these short tabs, but we're gonna fold the short tab in. Both short tabs. Now let's assemble this simple little box. Take the adhesive um, release off of the short tabs. We're going to fold the short tabs toward the side with no adhesive and we're going to square up the bottom and make the bottom and back side of the box. Now this is the front side of our box. And why is this the front side of our box? Because when we peel the release, we fold up from the front to the back. Now the seams are at the back of our box and that is important for a good clean finish. So this is the front of our box, no seams. Back of our box has those seams. Let's add the handles to our box. So we're gonna take our window sheet and we're gonna put it about halfway down the side of the box and hold in place. 
and then you're gonna use a little hole punch here. You could also use your take your pick tool if you'd like to, um, to do a pilot hole for these, but because our box is already together here, the hole punch is really the ideal way to add the brads. So punch, and then we're going to apply the handle to that side of our box using the brad. Got the little pilot hole already started. Just pop the brad in and close it up, securing the handle. We're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. Check to make sure that your handles are equal on both sides. Punch and secure the handle with a brad. What a cute little tote already, right? Now, let's put the front of our box up and we're gonna grab multi-purpose liquid glue. And we're going to add the multi-purpose liquid glue to the front of the box and sort of an arch, because we don't want any glue where the little beehive opens up. Center that right on the front of the box all the way to that bottom fold. When you've got that, flip. And then same thing, arch on the back of the box with some multi-purpose liquid glue. That way we avoid that little door, but still get a nice secure hold on this beehive. And we're gonna line this one up from the back so that it's against the bottom edge. And looking down from above, is it lining up with the front beehive? And burnish that. Now, this is the back of our box. Let's lay that on the table so it stays the back of our box. And let's grab our little sentiment and our little flowers. Here's my flower punch. I'm going to go ahead and punch out my little flower. And then I'm going to use my bone folder to kind of curl the petals. So I'll just gently roll the petals over the edge of the bone folder using my thumb. All right, now the bottom flower doesn't need quite as much shape as the top one, but we still want to give it a little life. Okay, so you can see my top flower is a little more cupped than my bottom flower. Let's go ahead and adhere the top one, the cupped one, with a little bit of multi-purpose liquid glue right in the center and adhere to the bottom flower. All right, it's really coming together. We need some Stampin' Dimensionals now. Got some little minis here, and I'm gonna cut down the center of one of the rows and grab out a half. And then I'm gonna cut that half pretty much in half also. We're gonna use that little piece on the flower center here. Make sure it doesn't show. This would be a good place for a little black Stampin' Dimensional. I have them behind me, I should have used it. and then in the center of our flower. Now on the back of our tag, we're going to add some more Stampin' Dimensionals. This is the edges of the mini Stampin' Dimensionals. I'm gonna put a few of those on the back of my tag. Let's get the tag on the box. Now for placement, I'm just using the bottom line of the hive and um, off center to the right a bit. We can add a bit of multi-purpose liquid glue on the edge of the tag here. And then we can grab one of these little pieces of the dimensional edge, add that to the box, peel the paper. Now we've got all the adhesive we need for our little flower. We'll bring the flower to the box, but don't cover the sentiment. It can go off the edge of the box a little bit. There's our little hive, isn't it cute? All right, let's add some ribbon to our box, make it nice and festive. I love this Daffodil Delight Hive with this closeout Halloween ribbon. It just works so good with the bees. I've been saying in my videos and classes and stuff, grab a spool of that scallop ribbon if you love the bee stuff because it's a perfect coordination and it's on sale. All right, so you wanna bring that down the handle. I've I need ribbon scissors to trim the tails. 
Nice clean new angle on those. Such a pretty project already. Let's get our candies in. Of course, we gotta have a bit of honey with the bees. That's a given. I like bit of honey. What about you? Do you like bit of honey? All right, there's our treat. Let me get this guy in here so you can see one from the front too. Now, the last little detail I have for you here. Remember those two little bees? Let's give them a tiny dash of color. We're going to color their stripes with Daffodil Delight Stampin' Blends combos. And what I did here, I'm gonna very simply stripe the bee with the light Daffodil Delight, and then I'm gonna contour the bee with the dark Daffodil Delight. And where the light and dark touch, just melt them back together with the light. That's all the coloring, super simple. Two bees, stripe them up, all done, very easy. Now, one bee needs a mini dimensional, and the other bee needs a mini glue dot. So there's our dimensional bee, and here is our glue dot bee, right in the center. What we're gonna do with our little bee, so he can be seen from both ends, or both sides of the box, we're gonna add our little bee to the handle, buzzing around, and then to the inside of the handle, we're going to add another little bee so it covers the adhesive, and now our bee can be seen buzzing above the hive from any angle. Isn't that cute? All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed the project. I hope you're excited about celebration. If you live in the Chicago area, come and join me for an event. We have a lot of fun. And if you're not in the Chicago area, don't worry. I do tons of stuff online. Check out the blog, kitchentablestamper.com. And to shop for Stampin' Up! products 24-7, you can buzz over to marissaalvarez.stampinup.net. Thanks for watching.